Okay, so I recall, uh, recall from yesterday that we have uh, a class of function on uh, the cotangent bundle, which were symbols, what we call symbols, where m was, let's say, an uh, a real number. They were function uh, satisfying in local coordinate uh, some estimate on, on their derivative of this form. Work C was uh, Oh, sorry. Was uh, a smooth version of the modulus of Xi, where Gx is a, a metric, uh, G is a Riemannian metric on, on M. Uh, and we had a procedure. Um, we had a, a procedure that I called OP, which was a, a morphism of. Uh, Algebra uh, going from SM of T star M to operators, which I called CM. Uh, and, and, and these operators were what uh, is called pseudo differential operator of order M. Uh, inside this class, there is the, the, the space of differential operator. This is included inside M. Um, the, the following property also are true, so um, so up was was defined using a, using a partition of unity and associated to a, a set of local chart a covering charts on the manifold. So it's not really canonical, but somehow the, the class of operator is canonical. So if you, if you define up using another set of partition of unity and, and local charts, you will get uh, other operators, but this, this uh, vector space of operator is going to be the same. Um, and the properties, uh, the main properties of these operators where that uh, if A is one of these operators, um, then A maps smooth function to smooth function, just like, okay, when I say a space of differential operator, I mean with smooth coefficient. Uh, so this is continuous. Uh, A, in fact, is mapping any Sobolev space HS to HS minus M. For A, so this is a bounded operator for any S. Um, then there was, a, uh, uh, if you take uh, A1 composed with A2, this belongs to psi m1 plus m2, just like differential operator. If aj belongs to psi mj. Uh, and there was a principal, uh, there was a principal, uh, principal symbol map 
going from cm to sm t star m modulo sm minus one. So this is what we call the principal symbol. And this is a, a morphism of algebra somehow. You get uh, that. Uh, um, the symbol of the composition is the product of the principal symbol. So, for instance, a consequence of this is that if you, an application of this is that if, if, if you compute the commutator of these two, this actually belongs to uh, m1 plus m2 minus 1. Um, yeah, because in fact, uh, being zero for the principal symbol, the kernel of this, uh, of this map, of this linear map, is going to be psi uh, m minus 1. So I want to... Uh, um, sigma a equal zero or equal zero modulo sm minus one of t star m imply that uh, a belong to psi m minus one. So this is what you get. And in fact, there is even more. You can compute the principal symbol of the commutator and this is going to be the Poisson bracket of these two symbols using the natural symplectic structure uh, on T star M. So this is really a good uh, object for quantization. The, the principal symbol of A1, A2 is going to be uh, I, the complex number I, times the, the, the Poisson bracket of the principal symbol of A1 and A2. It's up to sign, I, I never, I, so if you want. So this is the Poisson bracket, the natural Poisson bracket on T star M. So you have a Poisson algebra of observable, and when you quantize, uh, you get uh, uh, you get the the the, the Lie algebra of operator, but it it. Of, of course, uh, it's only true at the level of principal symbol. So if you, if you want to, you start from a symbol, you, you quantize it using this map, op A uh, commutated with op uh, B is not going to be uh, op of the Poisson bracket. It's only true at the, it's true up to a, a, a lower order pseudo differential operator. And this is related to the fact that there is not, you know, an exact quantization and related to the uncertainty principle. <clears throat> okay, so we have, uh, so all these, uh, these are a bit technical, especially uh, uh, this, this um, property of composition. Uh, the fact also that A is bounded uh, like this also needs a bit of work. It's not, so, it's not so obvious, but now it's classical, let's say. Um, yeah, I should say, actually, I, I, someone asked me yesterday, if you want a good, I mean, there are many references, but there is one that I like particularly, especially for non-specialists. I mean, if, if you're not an analyst, you, you, you may look at the book of Shubin. Uh, has a quite a pedestrian uh, approach. And th there are many other books which are very good too, like, like the book of Gregis and Jostrand. And Sorry, as a Yes, yes, here, when I say this, is always uh, in, in, in this space. Yes, so it's always mod uh, S 
m1 plus m2 minus 1. Uh, this one is going to be is going to be in, in m m1 plus m2 minus 1 here. So this is only true. This equality again is true up to s m1 plus m2 minus 2 now. It's, uh, so the symbol, the full symbol somehow is not really well defined. It means when it really depends on the choice of coordinate, but the, the principal term is well defined as an object in in the cotangent bundle. If you change coordinate, it changes uh, just like a function, a good function uh, uh, in, in this uh, space. Sorry? Yes, yes, I should add that the symbol of op of A is A modulo is the, cl the class of A somehow, so A mod SM minus 1. Okay, so these are all the properties and, and once we have this we can start to do a lot of things actually. Um, I need also another property. Um, so I want to tell you also about something which I will use quite a lot, which is called the ego of uh, lemma. Which is related to change of coordinate. Um, so, if f is a, a diffeo on M, um, I want to look at, um, I, I, I can define this map, uh, which is the, the transfer operator uh, associated to f, so it's just the composition. I map f to f composed with f. Just like this transfer operator I was, I was doing with the flow of the vector field. And I want to compose now, um, so if now I take a pseudo differential operator of order m, uh, I want to look at uh, the composition of a with this uh, map. Huh? So the lemma says that if I compose uh, TF, so I will call it AF. So it's TF composed with A composed with TF minus one. So I, 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 I first pull back by the inverse of F, then I apply my operator and then I come back. Uh, so this is very easy to do with a differential operator. It's just change of coordinate. You can compute, and you can compute how this, the C, of course, uh, this is also going to be a differential operator. If A were, uh, so were a differential operator, because differential operators are invariant by change of coordinate. I mean, they, they, they stay differential operator, that's what I mean. And you can compute the, the symbol of the differential operator you obtain, and you get a, a formula, which is uh, quite nice. It turns out that uh, on the level of the differential operator, this is also true, you get the same type of formula. So in fact, the, the lemma says that this conjugation by a, a, a pullback by diffeomorphism is also an element in psi m, and the symbol has a nice form, has a nice, uh, has a nice uh, expression. It's just going to be the symbol of a uh, composed with f. On, on, on the x variable and on the and on the level of uh, on the level of uh, the impression 
is going to be acting by the natural action of f, which is the differential of f minus 1 transposed. So this is what we... Um, so the, the action xc map to f of x df x minus 1 transpose acting on xi in a linear way. So this is the symplectic lift, uh, what we call the symplectic lift of f. The natural action of f when you lift it on the cotangent bundle. This is true on, dif on differential operator. That's really an easy computation. Yes, yes. So this is true again, uh, modulo Sm minus 1. So that, that's, that's quite nice because uh, if we think in terms of a dynamical system like the flow of an operator or just a map, it means that if we, if we act, uh, if we take uh, the transfer operator and we compose it on the right or on the left by pseudo differential operator, uh, we, get, we really stay in the space of pseudo differential operator and, and we see the dynamic is uh, starting to act on the level of symbol. So somehow the idea is that we, we're going to, tra to transfer uh, all the analysis part in, in terms of symplectic geometry, basically, symplectic dynamics. Once we have uh, all the properties that I wrote there. And yeah, I forgot to recall also that uh, we had an estimate on, on, on the norm of A in terms of the symbol, also, in terms of the principal symbol, up to a compact operator. So maybe I should recall it because this will be important. So somehow for any epsilon, I, this was, uh, so for any epsilon, uh, there exists, uh, so if A, mm, okay, let me write it properly. So. Uh, this was what I said yesterday. If A belongs to psi 0 of M, A is bounded on L2. And for any epsilon, small, uh, there exists a decomposition uh, A equal a0 plus A1, where A1 uh, has a smooth integral kernel so in particular it map uh, any uh, any negative sub any sobore space to uh, to HN, it, ma it maps distribution to smooth function, so it's really compact operator, it's regularizing uh, as much as you like. It's a, it's, you can think of it as a remainder term. And then the, all the information somehow is contained in A0, and A0 we have a norm estimate on L2. It's going to be bounded by one plus epsilon, so it's almost the norm, the, the limb sup, uh, of the, the, the norm of the principal symbol for C uh, going to infinity. So basically it says that if we have a zero sort of operator, we can estimate the norm if we know the principal symbol up to a remainder, which is going to be a compact operator. And more than compact, it's going to be really as smoothing everything, map mapping distribution to smooth function. Uh, sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> and the idea is how you construct this A0 and A1. Well, you, you take the symbol of A, you, you cut it, uh, you multiply by a cutoff function, which is 1 on a very big set, and 0 uh, at infinity, and you decompose into chi plus 1 minus chi. The part near infinity is going to be in A0. The part uh, which is compactly supported in C is going to be A1. The compact property in C in A1 is going to, to have this property. And, and, and this part, because it's really localized close to infinity, uh, there is a bit of work, but uh, one can show that the norm is going to be very close to the symbol. Can I take A0 to be op, uh, op of? 
Yeah, yes, yes, a zero is just op of a multiplied by uh, one minus chi, where chi is a function which is one on a very big set uh, of t star m. So it's localized very close to, to the infinity of t star m. That's the idea. I mean, that's how you prove it, actually. OK, so that's, that's, uh, this was quite important. And now I will try to use this for, um, uh, for, for another flow. Uh, I also need to tell you something about uh, ellipticity. Um, OK, so this one, this one. So you probably, many of you know elliptic, oper at least some example of elliptic operator, like the Laplacian and so on. Uh, with this uh, pseudo differential calculus or micro local calculus, a nice thing is that we can quantify ellipticity. So even if an operator is not elliptic in the usual sense, it can still be elliptic in some region of uh, the cotangent bundle in some way, which means that if the principal symbol is, uh, does not vanish in, in some cones of the cotangent bundle, we will say it's elliptic in this cone. So uh, I will call now, uh, I will tell you a definition, which I call ellipticity. So it's really, it should be called microlocal ellipticity. Uh, so if A is in psi M of M, um, we say, that A is elliptic uh, in a set, uh, uh, let's call it uh, C, or C maybe like this, uh, which is a, a subset of T star M, which is a conic set. So when I mean conic, is uh, conic with respect to the to the, the dilation in the fiber, so all positive. So it's a cone, in each fiber it's a cone. So it's a family of cone. It's a conic set. If the principal symbol of A uh, is bounded below by some constant, uh, positive constant, time C to the power M in in the cone, when I say cone, it's really the conic set. It's a family of cone because it depends on x somehow uh, in, the, in the cone C. So if you know it's, it's bounded below by, by just the right power corresponding to the order of the operator, uh, we say it's, uh, it's conic. So let me give an example. If I take x a vector field, like the, the, the vector field uh, of an another flow, typically, in local coordinate. Uh, the principal symbol I said yesterday is just, uh, oh, maybe let's, let me take j here to not mess up with the complex number i, is going to be i psi contracted with x, which is the sum of j of xi i, xi j i uh, x j x. So the principal symbol of a vector field is just a, a linear function in xi. And this one is actually, it, it's elliptic in psi 1 of m in the region, in the conic region, in any <coughs> conic region, uh, Cx bigger than epsilon, for instance. So if you want to have the vector field, um, if I take the, the, the conormal, um, this is called the characteristic set, the, the set where C of X is zero. Uh, 
And uh, if I remove a, a small conic set outside this characteristic set, Uh, I'm, I'm going to get, uh, it's just elliptic in the, in, in the sense of this definition. So it's not an elliptic operator, but we can still say it's elliptic in some region of the cotonal phase. And that's quite a convenient thing. Um, which can be, which allow us to, to define uh, the notion of wavefront set of a distribution, wavefront set is going to be a set in the cotangent bundle where a distribution is singular somehow. And tomorrow I will show you an uh, application uh, to dynamical system and in particular to the marked length spectrum rigidity of, of this wavefront set, uh, of this wavefront set properties somehow. So once we have this uh, notion of ellipticity, we can define the notion of wavefront set of a distribution. So if I take U a distribution, um, is going to be in, in, in a certain negative sobre space because we are on a compact manifold. And we say that uh, we, we, the wavefront set of U, of U is uh, defined as follow, is, is a, a closed conic uh, set of T star M defined by, uh, defined by the following property. So it's not defined by what it is, but, but, but it's defined by, by its uh, complement. So we say that x c is not in the wavefront set of u. If there exists uh, an a in psi 0, and it works also with psi m actually, uh, which is elliptic, uh, uh, so maybe let, let me, in a conic set containing uh, a conic open set containing x0, x0, such that a of u is smooth. So let me make a picture so that it will give you an idea. So I have x0, so x0 is the base point. Now I look in the fiber, I have xi0. And I want a, a conic set in terms of xi, in the xi variable, which contain this xi zero, where I have an A with a principal symbol, which is bounded below by c zero uh, xi to the power zero, so it's just c zero in this case, uh, in, uh, in this uh, conic set C. So I, if, I, if I can find an operator which has this property and such that when I apply it to you, it's smooth, we say that, I'm not, that this point is not in the wavefront set. So roughly speaking, what does it say? It say you, can, you can imagine that sigma a is just a, a, a function of xi which is homogeneous of degree zero and which is one in this cone and zero outside. And more or less what it says that if I look at my function, I, I localize it uh, 
close to this point. For instance, I multiply my distribution by a smooth cut of function localized very close to this point. I take the Fourier transform. It says that in this cone, the Fourier transform is decaying uh, as fast as any power of t. This is this. Because the, the smoothness of a function can be described in, in the decay of the Fourier transform. But because we are on a manifold, uh, it's quite convenient to use this formalism with the differential operator to describe this, this part. So it can be a, a bit uh, strange if it's the first time you see it, but uh, it's quite a convenient uh, uh, concept somehow. And why it's so convenient is because first, for example, a, a, a first application of this is that it allows you to, to multiply distribution. It says that uh, if uh, u1 and u2 are two distribution, um, then u1 time u2 also makes sense as a distribution if uh, for any uh, x and xi uh, in the wavefront set of u1 then uh, minus uh, sorry x minus xi is not in the wavefront set of u2 so if you know something about the wavefront set of the first distribution if you know something about the wavefront set of another distribution you can multiply them as long as the sum of their wave that there is not a point in the wavefront set of one and the other, so that when you sum, you get zero in, in the xi. So for instance, uh, just to give you a, 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 an intuition of why this, this quantity, this, uh, why this, this thing is, is coming somehow, you can think, uh, for instance, at the circle, if you take uh, a u, of theta, a, a distribution on the circle, you can expand it uh, uh, in Fourier series like this, and the gro the the order of the tri distribution is going to be encoded in the growth of this Fourier coefficient. Um, and for instance, uh, if if you if if uh, un is zero for any n less than some very ne negative number, so if you have only positive Fourier mode, after, at least not positive, but if uh, if it, if all the Fourier mode are zero when uh, you're uh, ne near minus infinity for the negative one, uh, you can make a computation, so it's a bit of, it's not very hard, but you know, it's, you have to work a bit. But intuitively, it's, it's quite uh, clear, at least that uh, in this case, the wavefront set uh, is going to be uh, contained uh, only in the, in the positive, uh, so I take the circle like this, and I take uh, V equals D theta, I take the vector field here, is going to be contained in, in the, the theta xi so that uh, v uh, xi is positive. So the wavefront set is going to be contained only in one side. And it's related to the fact that you have only positive Fourier uh, I mean, that the, all the negative Fourier mode are, are zero after a certain, uh, when you're very negative. And, and now if you, if you take a un equals zero for all Fourier mod which are very positive, the wavefront set is going to be contained in vxc negative. And you can check that uh, if you want to multiply uh, two Fourier series like this, if you want to make sense of them, uh, it works for instance, if one has all the Fourier mod negative which are zero or all the Fourier mod near minus infinity or zero, and the other one also has this property. So if you, are, if you multiply two uh, Fourier series like this, where you end, you, get, you, you have a polynomial bound, you can multiply them, for instance, when there is only one side uh, of the Fourier mod which are non-zero. So 
uh, now if u and u prime have this property, Uh, of having no uh, Fourier mod uh, near n equal minus infinity, then I can multiply them just by just expanding all the Fourier mod, and, 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 and I still get something which is a distribution. Uh, uh, it's a little exercise to do, but uh, it's not, not very difficult. Sorry. Yes? Is it possible for a distribution to have opposite vectors in the wave function? Well, if you have opposite... Ah, you mean in, in one distribution? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, then u times u prime makes sense as a distribution. As a distribution... Uh, on this one. And in this case, you can see that this condition that I was writing uh, is, is true, actually. Because they, they have wave from set in the same direction. So you don't have this property. Yeah? So this, this is kind of giving an intuition of why this property uh, holds true somehow. OK, so now let me come to, to um, another flow we'll use uh, these properties. Um, <coughs> okay. I want to get this done. Oh, this one down. So I was, as I was saying yesterday, the idea now is to try to construct a certain space, a functional space, which look like a Sobolev space, so that the vector field of the flow becomes Fredholm. So it, it, it has uh, good properties. In fact, it sounds a bit crazy because uh, it's, uh, it, it's just a vector field. So, a priori, a uh, vector field uh, on a compact manifold should not, have, uh, should not be Fred on I mean, should not have discrete spectrum, a priori. But uh, if you design the right, the right space, it turns out that uh, you can still uh, make it uh, having a finite dimensional kernel and, uh, and ha having a... a a discrete spectrum. And this is one way that uh, the Gibbs measures uh, can come, actually. They will come as eigenfunction of this uh, operator on these particular spaces. OK, so um, just one corollary of, ego of uh, a corollary of the ego of lemma. I will not, uh, I could write the proof, it's not very hard, but then I, I will get a bit late. Is that uh, if, you, if you have an equation like this for f for uh, x, a vector field, so if, you, if you're trying to solve a, a transport equation uh, and say f is, for instance, smooth. <clears throat> then, this is something that we call propagation of regularity. If a point uh, is not, if you know that a point is not in the waveform set of u, so if you know that u is uh, regular in the microlocal sense, uh, in a near a C0 in the cotangent space, what happened is that it's propagation by the, by the flow. So phi t of x0, x0 is also not going to be in the wave front side of u. And phi t is the, is the symplectic lift uh, of the flow. So it's just phi t of x and differential phi t minus 1 of x transpose c. So if you know that your, the, your function, your distribution has regularity in the Fourier picture near a cone, this actually 
will propagate all along the trajectory. For any t. And tomorrow I'll explain you a, a nice application of this, of this instance for the, the Markland spectrum. So this is called propagation of regularity or propagation of singularity. This is more, there is a marginal version of this. If you look at the wave equation, for instance, you also have something similar. If you know that your solution is regular somewhere in phase space, it, it will actually be regular all along the, the symplectic flow of uh, the Hamilton flow of the principal symbol. Okay, now let me come to my another flow. So now, uh, another flow is described by its uh, linearization. Its linearization has the nice property. Uh, and uh, anisotropic spaces. So I, I start with X, a smooth, uh, smooth vector field. generating an another flow. The flow will be denoted by phi t. Uh, I want to, to decompose uh, the cotangent. What I said is that everything is, going, is, is happening on the cotangent bundle rather, rather than the tangent bundle in, in, in terms of regularity. So the cotangent bundle, I want to uh, use the Anosov decomposition, which I will denote by AU star plus E S star. And this, these are defined as follow. E zero star is the uh, annulator of uh, EU plus E S. E U star is the annulator of EU plus E0. E0 is R of X, is the flow direction. And ES star is going to be the annihilator of uh, ES plus E0. So if I look at the, 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 the picture of the flow, uh, of the linearized flow in the cotangent bundle, I get this type of pic, this form of picture. So, sorry, yes? So, in, uh, this perhaps you yes. said it's what is the assumption you decide that x u is smooth. Uh, u can be any, what's? U is just uh, any distribution. It can be a distribution. You take a distribution which solves this transport equation. Just the fact that the right hand side is smooth I tell you uh, this thing. Um, yeah, here my convention looks a bit strange, but uh, you will see why. <laughs> um, so why why is this? Is because uh, if C is in E U star, you can check that uh, if you look at the symplectic flow, symplectic lift. So phi t would be the symplectic lift. T star. Uh, in fact, phi t x of c uh, is less than c exponential minus nu t x for some nu positive if um, if t is negative. So t. and so this is this. And if uh, C belongs to ES star, uh, phi T x of C 
is less than C extension minus nu T for T positive. So you get a contraction in ES star in the future. So this is why I, I, I use this notation, but it's stable in the... Okay, so now the, the picture uh, the picture is like this. I have EU star, I have ES star, and then I have E0, which is transverse. And I get uh, an attractor at infinity, which is EU star in the fibers. So this is the dynamic of phi t, phi t of xi in the xi variable in, uh, in EU star plus ES star. And E0 does not do anything. It's just a neutral direction. So now the idea is, uh, the idea, we want to construct a, uh, we want, the idea now is to construct a certain elliptic pseudo-differential operator which will allow to define uh, certain anisotropic spaces so the goal is to construct a certain operator cm which is going to be a quantization of a symbol with some Okay, uh, I, here I'm cheating a bit. The M will have to be something a bit more complicating, complicated than, that, that, than just a, a real number. Such that, uh, so elliptic, uh, elliptic in some way, with A minus one uh, in C minus M. So the, we want to construct it so that it's invertible. Uh, such that uh, uh, if I take minus x plus v, where v is the, poten is, is the smooth potential, uh, this is going to be Fredholm on uh, a of L2. Um, which I will denote by H, which will be a Hilbert space. Uh, when I say Fredholm, of course, it's a it's a it's an unbounded operator, so one has to be a bit careful. Uh, this is Fredholm from its domain to, um, to 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 H, but for the moment, I don't want to. Uh, v is fixed here. Sorry. Let V a smooth function. So why not V could just be a constant. Uh, yeah, uh, no, A will not depend on V, just on the flow. That would be important. Um, so for any Z, so it's very simple. Uh, such that uh, this is, so I fix V. For any v yes, it's going to be Fredholm. And for this, the idea, the idea is to construct uh, once we have this, uh, to construct a certain operator Q, uh, Q which is say a bounded operator from smooth function to smooth function, it's not going to be absolute differential operator, such that uh, minus x plus v, so it's going to be a pseudo inverse, almost inverse, it's a non-that somehow, so that if I do this, I get the identity 
plus a remainder s with s uh, of the form uh, s0 plus s1, where s0 has norm uh, on h, which is strictly less than, let's say, one half, and s0 is compact. On H. So if you have this, uh, this is a little exercise of, uh, of uh, functional analysis. If you have an operator identity plus an operator of norm less than one plus a compact remainder. Sorry? One here? Uh, sorry, S1. Uh, S1. Then uh, you, you actually can show that this is a Fredholm operator then this is going to have, uh, it's a Fredholm operator, it has a, a finite dimensional kernel and co-kernel on H. So what's, what's special one half? No, okay, I can put one, it works as well. I just put one half. Uh. Can you say perhaps for non-analysts like me, what's the Fredholm operator on a non, uh, for, for a, uh, for an unbounded? Yeah, you, okay. For, for an unbounded? When I mean Fredholm, I have to, uh, well, first, you, first you need to to show the operator is closed. Yeah, but so, so, so the operator is only defined. Uh, yes, on a domain. Yes. Yes. Domain, I guess. yes. So you have to find a, a domain if you want. Well, you have to use a bit of theory of unbounded operator. So you need to prove the operator is closed in a certain way, uh, that it has a domain, a little bit like the Laplacian has uh, the sobre F space H two as a domain, and it's going to be bounded from H two to L two. And it means Fredholm in this sense. From, for instance, for Laplacian, will be from H two, so we're left of order two. H two is a Hilbert space. Yes. The domain is always a. Yes, you can make uh, make it uh, Hilbert space. So here, I don't want to go much into this technicality, but it means when I mean Fredholm is that uh, mm -hmm. it has a domain which is a subset of H, and it's going to be Fredholm from the domain to H. But everything is contained in, if you can construct Q, which is, ah, it has to be bounded also, sorry. Q is also bounded on, on H. So if you can construct an almost inverse on H, such that you get, you get an error which is small plus compact, this implies this, impl this is Fredholm in particular, it has finite dimensional kernel and co-kernel uh, in uh, H. Uh, no, no. In this case, no. So Q will map infinity to infinity. Uh, it will be bounded on H, but H is uh, H is just a, a space which is contained in some in the distributional space, and it contains infinity. You mean it's infinity. It's bounded with respect to the norm of H. Yes, yes. Okay. So a priori, it's defined on infinity, infinity. You can extend it on distribution. And it, it also has the property that it's also bounded on H. So that's the goal of uh, this. And okay, I'm more or less done now. Um, so let me just in one minute say how we will construct the A, and I, I will finish tomorrow. So the idea is that A. We will construct A using the dynamic. So I, I fix uh, G, G is a, I fix a, a Riemannian metric. So I, then I can define this, uh, this, uh, this Japanese bracket. And here, I will take A to be uh, uh, xi to power m of x and xi. And m is going to be a symbol of order zero on t star m, which is homogeneous of degree zero in xi near infinity. And which will have the property that 
it will be described in terms of this picture. So let me call this CU, and maybe there is also a cone corresponding to ES. which I call CS, and I will choose M, which is going to be uh, so it is going to be minus one near e, uh, in CS, and it's going to be plus one in CU. So I'm going to take a function which is minus one in the blue cone, plus one in the yellow cone. I mean, it's going to be any, M is, I don't care about what happened in a compact, but for C large, it's going to be homogeneous of degree zero, minus one here and plus one here. And it's going to, 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 to increase by the flow. So in the sense that M uh, phi T C uh, is bigger or equal to M of X of C. So minus one. So the flow is the flow is moving like this. Uh, so I want to go from minus one to plus one, so it's going to increase with respect to the symplectic flow. So this will be what I will explain uh, tomorrow. Sorry? Uh, in the E0 direction, uh, it will not do anything, basically. But it has to be true, it has to satisfy this everywhere for C large. And there is a just a little remark is that this guy uh, here, uh, it's not, uh, it's going to be In a PCM, but you see the, the premise uh, here, I put an M which depends on, uh, on Xi and on M. So it's, it's not really entering in, in what I described before because he, before I was taking M to be a real number. So one need just to extend a little bit uh, all I, what I said to this type of M which are homogeneous of degree zero. Basically everything works the same. And the, the, the main thing would be to, to, to do this. So I should say that all this construction uh, in this picture was done uh, in some work of Faure and Jostron and also Roy in the first paper. And it's a good reference if you want to look at it. I will just tomorrow explain the proof uh, of why it's Fredorm and how we construct it. Maybe simplify a little bit uh, certain aspect of this, but uh, it's contained there. Fredholm index will be zero. And why is zero is because uh, you can always add here uh, a big number if you, uh, maybe, or here you add the lambda, where lambda is a, is a very big number. And then it's easy to see that uh, this, this has no kernel. This is really injective, and you can you can just find uh, its inverse is its inverse is just uh, something like minus x plus v minus lambda inverse is some some. Uh, well, I hope I don't get it wrong, but it's something like this minus t. Uh, so if I apply to f, I, I will get f composed with the floor. And then I get uh, a term involving uh, something like this. So we can really write the solution of the transport equation. And this is converging if, if this is really big because this is dumping all this. So you can really invert it uh, and check that this, is, this inverse is going to be bounded on, on, on H. And so it has, you can see the index is zero because of this. Uh, but Sorry? 
yes, in general, the, the kernel will be finite dimensional. And if you, look at, if you look at the kernel here, it's going to give you the Gibbs measure, typically. Or actually, it should be the, the kernel of the adjoint, which is the Gibbs measure. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.